After struggling to get past a large sand ripple, Perseverance showed it who's boss. Meanwhile, Ingenuity shrugged off the brutal cold of the Martian winter, taking flight and closing the gap with Perseverance on this episode of Mars Guy. In the previous episode, I showed how the self-driving mode of Perseverance got it into trouble as it approached a large sand ripple. Sand ripples like these are common on Mars, seen from orbit for decades, and clear evidence of blowing wind. Rovers have been providing close-up views for about 20 years, showing us that they're actually made of a mix of sand grains and dust. It's the dust that makes them sticky enough to retain a clear imprint of the wheel cleats, technically known as grousers. It's the same thing with boot prints on the moon. After approaching the sand ripple at a shallow angle, Perseverance experienced some wheel slip that probably set off an alarm. The course correction didn't seem to help, so Perseverance turned around and phoned home. That allowed the rover drivers, who are more like programmers, to send up commands on the preferred route over the ripple. Perseverance needed to swing wide to approach it at a steeper angle. That's how it crossed this ripple on the outbound route away from the location dubbed Enchanted Lake. Now it's heading back there to collect some samples. Perseverance drove onto the ripple and then just parked. Here's my crude simulation and here's Mars Guy for scale. It's not clear why it didn't proceed onward, but it's a bit like a show of dominance, maybe? The slightly elevated position did provide for a nice vantage point to look back on the track spaghetti and the route onto the ripple. It also gives a good view of the path forward, probably along the same route as the outbound leg. The last time we checked in on Ingenuity, it was proving that it could still fly in the depths of Martian winter, a season it was not designed for. The test flight video has now been downlinked, showing the short flight at about 5 frames per second. It rose to about 5 meters, translated sideways about 2 meters, and then descended. Watch how it bounced when it hit the ground, which is typical of its forceful landings in what's referred to as a passive gravity drop from about 0.3 meters. This minimizes possible destabilizing ground control interactions. Ingenuity also sent back two images from its high-resolution color camera. Unfortunately, the terrain is very bland, ideal for safe takeoffs and landings, but not very interesting to look at. Ingenuity's shadow at least adds a bit of interest. Now, just over two weeks later, Ingenuity has flown again, this time covering nearly 100 meters. Typical of most flights, only a few navcam images have been downlinked at this point to show the descent. But other data can be used to reconstruct the direction and distance traveled, revealing that Ingenuity is closing the gap between it and Perseverance. The two don't actually need to meet up, they just have to maintain a distance of less than about a kilometer for optimal radio communications. It would be nice, though, if at some point the two could get close enough again to snap some pictures. For now, it's enough that both are overcoming the challenges of operating on Mars. <laughs>